You're listening to Her Brilliant Health Radio, episode number 41. Hey, it's Dr. Karen. This episode brought to you by the Shine Shake Energizing, Detoxifying, and Balancing. Eat sparkles for breakfast and shine all day. It's high protein, low carb, delicious way to start your day. Available at KarenDunstonMD.com. Enjoy. She used to deliver babies, but now she delivers exceptional wellness for women. Welcome to Her Brilliant Health Radio, where holistic women's health expert and board-certified OBGYN Dr. Kieran Dunstan shares revolutionary insight from leading experts on what you need to know today to treat the root cause of disease, heal, and create the radiant health you've been searching for. everybody. It's Dr. Kieran here with another episode of Her Brilliant Health Radio. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're talking about a very hot topic about medical marijuana, CBD, what can it do for you? So listen up. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my guest. Dr. Rachna Patel is an internationally recognized expert in the field of medical cannabis. After working as an emergency medicine doctor to help patients alleviate their pain, Dr. Patel ventured into the field of medical cannabis and started a practice dedicated to serving people with this revolutionary treatment. Her book, The CBD Oil Solution, treat chronic pain, anxiety, insomnia, and more without the high is the definitive A to Z guide for people wanting to know how to obtain and safely use this profoundly healing treatment to relieve their symptoms, transform their health, and live a better quality of life. Dr. Patel is a go-to expert on the medical use of CBD oil and has been featured on over 200 podcasts, speaking on international stages in articles for Lifehacker and Mind Body Green, as well as on network news. Welcome, Dr. Patel. Thank you. So glad to have you here and to talk all things medical marijuana, CBD oil, so that people can learn, women can learn how it can help them. There's so much buzz about it lately. And I think a lot of people are very confused because they're wondering, is this for me? Do I need this? Can it help me? So let's just jump right in. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. So if you're uh, someone listening and you're wondering, I have X problem. What has medical marijuana been shown to help in the research and what has CBD oil been shown to help? Okay, so um, the the research is limited. What I can really tell you is based on my clinical experience, right? So let's start with CBD, right? So, So you have hemp and you have marijuana. They both make CBD, they both make THC. Hemp just happens to make more CBD than THC, okay? Um, now, CBD, I've clinically found it to be most effective for, effective for things like uh, migraines and headaches, nerve pain, muscle pain, anxiety, insomnia, okay? Now, THC, I found effective for things like autoimmune conditions, depression, um, uh, nausea, vomiting, lack of appetite. So those would be all the most common conditions by chemical. So what, maybe we should back up. And the first thing is, because a lot of people just know marijuana. They just know marijuana and they don't really know what CBD is and THC are. So can you explain that for everybody? Yeah. Okay. So basically THC and CBD are chemicals and they're chemicals made by a family of plants, the cannabis family of plants. And within this family, you have two cousins. Okay. You have hemp and you have marijuana. They're very similar, but the main difference between the two is the amount of THC, okay? So by law, hemp has less than 0.3% THC, and marijuana then by default has more than 0.3% THC. That is the main distinguishing factor between these two cousins, so to speak. THC is the part that gets you high. Yeah, THC when consumed in excess amounts gets you high. Otherwise, it doesn't get you high. Okay. And so that's the difference between the hemp and the marijuana. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. And then where, what is the medicinal use of these? Okay, so then the main difference ultimately comes down to the amount of CBD, right? So, so because the amount of THC is so low in hemp, then you know the CBD is just much higher. So the benefit that you're gonna get from anything that's derived from hemp is mainly gonna be derived from the CBD. Okay. With marijuana, okay, um, you can get benefit from both CBD and THC or from high amounts of THC, okay? So it's almost like a spectrum where you have hemp that has high amounts of CBD, right? And that's beneficial for conditions that, that, um, that, that benefit from high amounts of CBD. Then you have marijuana where you can have um, uh, similar amounts of CBD and THC. And there's a group of conditions that benefit from that, you know, from having both CBD and THC. And then you have the marijuana that's high in THC. And then, you know, you have conditions that benefit from high amounts of THC. So that's, that's how I would explain it. Yeah. So both THC and CBD have medicinal properties. Yes. Yeah. And, and one may be more effective for certain types of issues and then the other for others. Yep. You got it. Yeah. And I would say overall, if I had to do a split, right, of what percentage of conditions are benefited by CBD and what percentage of conditions are benefited by THC, I would say 80% of conditions are benefited by CBD and about 20% of conditions are benefited by THC. Okay. Yeah. All right, but the THC is the one that's going to get you high, and so that's the one that's not legal in all states, correct? Well, okay, oh. so this is tricky. Okay. This is really tricky. There are states, okay, so you have federal law, and then you have uh, state law, okay? Right. So the state laws and the federal laws on THC and CBD can vary. Okay, so let's sort of get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, mm -hmm. Both at this point, both CBD and THC, per the Controlled Substances Act, are listed as a class one substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, meaning that these these chemicals are per this Controlled Substances Act are are highly addictive and have no medical value. Now, the only exception to this is CBD can be considered class five if it comes in the form of an FDA approved drug, okay? And the only FDA approved drug that contains CBD is known as Epidiolex, which is a pharmaceutical formulation of CBD. So that's, that, that's where, you know, legally where you stand. Now, hemp under the Farm Bill 2018 is legal, okay? Um, and marijuana in general it, at the federal level is not considered legal, okay? Now, that's federal level. Then you have laws by state, okay? So you have some states where marijuana is legal for, for recreational use. Then you have some states where marijuana is legal for medical use. Now, there are other states that, that have separate laws on hemp, okay? So um, in some states, they do allow hemp-derived products without a prescription, but then there are states that only allow hemp-derived products with a prescription. So, so basically, if you're looking to use any of these products, you have to just know, you know what, what your state laws are. Now, having said that, a lot of states are, are um, loosening up their laws when it comes to hemp-derived products. So, so that's what I would, I, I would say. Okay, so that's confusing. <laughs> uh, I'm confused, and so I know people listening are confused. Uh, and it sounds like it's very state specific and yeah. state doesn't necessarily agree with federal. Um, so hemp though, is, is that considered any type of controlled substance at all by the federal, federal level or no? No, it's, it's not in, it's hemp in and of itself is not considered, itself. no, a controlled okay. substance, but CBD, which is, which can be derived from hemp at okay. this point is listed as a class one substance under the Controlled Substances Act, right? So you have the plant 
and then you have the chemicals that are derived from the plant. And, and legally, they're, they're, they classify them differently. Okay. But if it's manufactured a certain way, then right. it can be class five for medicinal use. Yes. Right. So let me give you an example. Let's take Texas, for instance. Okay. Right. Texas um, uh, only allows CBD derived from mature stalks. And only, so, so, so CBD oil that comes from mature stalks of hemp is considered legal. If it comes from any other part of the plant, it's not considered legal. Okay. Okay. And, and this is now changing. It's, it's changing as of today is what? April 4th? It's going to change tomorrow, April 5th. So the laws on these things are constantly changing, right? Right. So, um, so it's confusing, yeah, but, but. Um, you, you ultimately have to abide by the rules and regulations where you live. But this is probably more important for the manufacturers to know. And then for consumers to understand, they just need to know what they can get in their state, correct? Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, as a consumer, you do need to be aware. So there have been cases, for instance, in Tarrant County, Texas, um, where local law enforcement has been cracking down even on um, uh, people who possess CBD oil, right? Um, so so it, 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 it's really, you have to uh, go by uh, what, what the local law in your area says. Ultimately, if you really want to protect yourself, right? Um, so, and, and there's, there's different risks that are associated with, yes, the seller is more at risk than the consumer, um, I would say, uh, but, um, but you know, it, that's something that you need to take into consideration. Okay. So we've kind of established where these chemicals come from, the different plants. We've talked a little bit about the legality. We've talked a little bit, touched briefly on what they can help with. Why do they help? Why, what yeah. is it about THC and CBD that helps heal illness, pain, inflammation, things like that. Okay, so they, these chemicals work in various different ways, right? So I'm gonna give you, let, let's just go through the example of, of migraines and headaches, for instance, right? So with migraines, what's often prescribed are triptans, okay? So these are a class of medications that affect the serotonin pathway. Now, interestingly enough, um, I've had patients who've come into my office uh, uh, for treatment for migraines, they've managed to come off of the triptans and they just use a high CBD product to help manage their migraines, okay? Now, what's going on? Why is it, why is it that the, the high CBD is helping? So based on research in animal models, what we've seen is that CBD interacts with a serotonin, a specific serotonin receptor known as 5-HT1A, okay? So what's believed is that, that somehow CBD is impacting the serotonin pathway. Um, so that's one of the ways that it works. An another property of both CBD and THC is that they act as anti-inflammatories, okay? Oftentimes even better than over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, right? So for instance, like ibuprofen, and mm -hmm. even better than steroids. So, so that's another way that the CBD and the THC are helping, okay? Now, when it comes to depression, for instance, mm -hmm. um, uh, THC helps short-term Okay, because it, it um, affects dopamine levels, right? And dopamine is a feel-good hormone, mm -hmm. so um, or feel-good neurotransmitter. And so, um, so, so it's various different ways, various different chemical pathways through which uh, the CBD and the THC are helping a, a variety of different conditions. Okay, so some with the neurotransmitters, which really are mini hormones because they right. are essentially secreted one place and go another, and uh, decreasing inflammation also, and um, and and so the research really, I guess, because they were illegal for so long, including using them for research along with other chemicals like um, LSD and things like that. It's my understanding in the '60s that that they were made illegal, put on the schedule, and yep. couldn't even do research. So the research is lagging behind cultural uses for thousands of years. Probably right. people have. Yeah. I mean, this is. So the, the last documented, uh, the earliest documented use of marijuana for medical reasons goes back to 2700 BC. 
So, so it's been used um, a, a qu quite frequently um, and, and quite a lot, especially even in Eastern cultures. That's where it took root and then spread to the rest of the, of the Western world. Um, so it goes back uh, thousands upon thousands of years uh, in terms of this, this plant being used medically. And what were they using it for? Just illness in general? I guess they didn't have the diagnostic tools that we have now, so they actually. Probably... So believe it or not, it was for they wrote um, uh, in this medical compendium, in this Chinese medical compendium. They were using it for very specific reasons. They were using it for things like uh, arthritis, for um, uh, for menstrual cramps. Um, uh, and a lot of other pains in general. So there, so the same conditions that we're using it today. That's wonderful for menstrual cramps. That would be phenomenal. Yeah. And so it's been around, it's been used for thousands of years and now we're having access to this kind of, it's, it's like a treasure trove of the garden for our medicine cabinets. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what's great about it is that it's, it's all plant derived, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm a big believer that, that, that nature's already given us a treasure trove of, of medicine and, and nature's given it to us in the right combination of chemicals. So, um, so, and that's, you know, the reason why it's, it's so effective um, is because it, it, it's a right combination of chemicals. And as long as you know, what combination to use for what condition, it's going to be effective for you. And so what spurred your interest in this? You're working in the ER and what happened and what did you see that really made you start looking at this as a treatment option? So, okay, I bright eyed entered into medicine wanting to impact lives, wanting to change lives. And instead, what I ended up doing was that, um, I, you know, while I was going through my training in emergency medicine, a lot of times, you know, mainly what you treat in the emergency room is pain. Um, and, and your basic job as an ER physician is to rule out any emergent causes. And as long as there's no emergent cause, you send the patient home with typically a script for some sort of opioid to help manage their pain mm -hmm. and, and, and then instructions to follow up with their primary care doctor. So a lot of times these, these patients would come back because oftentimes the ER is used as a primary care center just given the nature of our system, uh, they would come back and say, you know, these medications aren't working to help with their pain. They're getting side effects from the medication. Mm -hmm. um, and in the worst case of scenarios, I was having to resuscitate patients who had overdosed on these medications, you know? Um, and I didn't really feel like I was solving a problem. And in, in fact, I felt like I was perpetuating a problem by just handing out scripts for these medications. And, and you know, it's oftentimes the very same patients would rotate through the ER uh, again. Um, and uh, at the same time, you know, during residency training, I was experiencing a lot of insomnia. So it was this sort of this weird phase where you're, you're not awake enough to be productive, but, but you're so wired, you can't sleep. Right. And so that's when you end up like surfing the internet, which is what I was doing. Um, and I was on Craigslist and I happened on an ad that said medical marijuana doctor needed. Um, that piqued my curiosity. I started to dig into the research, just hung out on, on pubmed.gov, looking um, at, at research study upon research study. And uh, a year later, uh, I was very compelled, you know, I, in terms of, uh, I saw potential in this mm -hmm. as a medication that could better treat chronic pain than what conventional medicine had to offer, right? So, so it's one thing to have the book knowledge as a physician, you really need to know, um, have, the, you know, quote unquote, street smarts, you really need to know how to treat patients and, and what they're experiencing uh, with the medications, how to adjust the medications and whatnot. So that's when I ended up um, uh, signing up to work at a medical marijuana clinic. Uh, and this was back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to today, you know, at this point, there's no turning back. Right. You know, there, the, once you know what you know, the benefits, I know for me, once I learned how functional medicine could help me, I couldn't ignore the fact that drugs and surgery just didn't work for people. And I had to offer functional medicine to my patients too. And like for you, once, once you knew what you knew, right. 
you, you became passionate about it. You became an expert in it. I always say, I have to share this with you, that the ER physicians are the smartest physicians in the hospital. That's just my opinion. Um, because you, oh, you really think so? <laughs> we don't have a good rep, though. <laughs> you have to be... You have to know how to treat anything and anybody that walks in the door. You have to have, I've seen ER physicians, you all have an encyclopedic knowledge of diseases, medications, and you can intertwine those two and assess a patient like no one I've ever seen. That's, I just, really. Right, right. Yeah. We're, what do we call it? We're called, we're called jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Oh, well, that, yeah, that, that would be derogatory. Um, but anyway, I think that that's the case. And, and I've seen some amazing innovation come from ER physicians. And so I, I love that you, you discovered this and that you're a big thinker and that you, you see, wow, this doesn't make any sense. You're really, a, you are awake in the ER paying attention yeah. to we are giving all these opioids and probably a lot of steroids and NSAIDs too. And, and these really make people sick and they don't fix the problem. And wouldn't right. it be funny if an illegal drug, so if marijuana was the answer to the opioid epidemic, right? I a think legal, it is. It a legal drug that was being is. used illegally. Right. So you do think it is. I do. I absolutely mm -hmm. think it is. You know, look, it has a much safer profile when compared to opioids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, th there is a much less potential for addiction. Okay. Um, in terms of the harm that can be done, you know, the, the side effects are far less and far less severe and it's not lethal. So it, it can't kill you. I mean, you'll right. feel horrible if you overdo it. Right. But, but it's not going to kill you at the end of the day, right? And so the goal is, is that is to save lives. I mean, opioids have taken thousands upon thousands yes. of lives, you know, over, over the years. And, and so when you have a better option, so here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I think conventional medicine has its place. Um, uh, you know, it, even medications like opioids have their place. And most of the time where they have their place is, in, in, is for acute care. It's not for chronic care, right. okay? So, so, th so that's what, what I would say. You know, when it comes to chronic care, a lot of it really ultimately comes down to the choices that you make, you know, what you put in your body, uh, what you do with your body, okay? How, you know, how you're moving. Um, and, and when it comes to what you put in your body, a lot, you know, is, is like I said, nature's already created the right combination of chemicals um, that we need to, to, to help fix you know, the chronic issues that we tend to experience. Yes. So maybe it is the answer to that epidemic. And it sounds like it's helping a lot of people. I can't tell you how many people I've heard say that it really has changed their life. So could you talk about some, you talked about the migraine headaches, maybe share with everybody listening. Let's talk about some common female issues. Migraines would be one of them. So maybe that, or if you've seen patients who had severe dysmenorrhea pain with periods or cramps, maybe there are patients who have that, or uh, patients who suffer with um, any of the disorders that you've seen that have been particularly remarkable sure. that you've seen improve. I'd love if you could share that. Sure. So we can actually, you know, uh, 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 CBD oil, medical cannabis helps women throughout their life um, uh, a span, okay? Because there, there's different um, conditions that afflict different age groups, right? So if we start with um, a, a woman who has just started menstruating, right? And who's experiencing menstrual cramps, for instance, it, you know, high amounts of CBD is effective for that because CBD acts as an antispasmodic. It relaxes your muscles. And what's the uterus? It's basically a lot of muscles put together. So that's one aspect. Now, when there's complications, of the reproductive system, like for instance, endometriosis, uh, which can, again, cause a lot of pain in the pelvic region. The, the uh, high amounts of CBD can help with that. Uh, women who are going through menopause or postmenopausal, um, uh, cannabis has helped things like anxiety, like insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, I've had uh, a, a good number of women uh, also report that it helps with their hot flashes. 
Now, the other thing is, is that uh, when it comes to intercourse, right, postmenopausally, um, mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, lubricants out there that uh, with uh, CBD and THC extracted in them, and it helps things like sensitivity and um, uh, 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 mainly sensitivity um, in, in the vaginal canal. So it can help throughout um, a, a woman's lifetime, depending on, you know, what, what conditions afflict them. Interesting. And how does somebody source reputable CBD oil? Yeah, so <laughs> this is a great question. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an unregulated industry, right? So a lot of the burden falls on the consumer in terms of ensuring that you're getting a solid quality product, right? So I'm going to walk you through a process. Mainly, first thing is, is that you always want to make sure whatever products you purchase are laboratory tested. Okay, um, and preferably this is a third party independent lab that's licensed by the state in which the product was manufactured. Mm -hmm. um, most products are typically manufactured in states like, like Colorado, Kentucky, North Carolina, um, because that's where uh, a vast majority of, of hemp is, is produced. And if it's marijuana based, then states where marijuana is legal for recreational use, they mandate laboratory testing. Okay, so first and foremost, just make sure it's lab tested. And this laboratory testing is important because that way you can ensure, you know, if you're buying a CBD product that there's actually CBD in the product, right? There's, there's a lot of products out there that have no CBD in them, right? I've had patients come to me saying that, hey, I bought this product online and it did nothing for me. Um, and oftentimes it's because the product had no CBD in it, okay? But so how would somebody access these lab studies? How are they going to know? Because I don't think most people are going to put that on their website or, you know, when I go buy gas at the corner, they've got CBD products in there. How right. is somebody going to know? So you want to always purchase from a reputable um, seller, right? Mm -hmm. And most reputable sellers will, will make their laboratory test results available or you can ask for them. And it'll come in the form of a PDF and, and you can go through it. And I have a couple of videos on my YouTube channel that walk you through how to read laboratory test results. Right. Um, but not only is it important in terms of um, helping you figure out, you know, if, if there's actually CBD in there, but it also helps you figure out how much CBD is in the product. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are varying strengths of CBD in different products. On average, it ranges anywhere from 250 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams in a one ounce bottle if it's in liquid form. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's a highly variable range, right? So you're going from low strength to high strength. Um, and then there's products that have less than 250 milligrams, and then there's products that have more than 1,000 milligrams. Um, but th those, I would say, are more outliers. R really, on average, you have the 250 to 1,000 milligrams. Mm -hmm. um, so that's important. The other thing is, is that it will um, tell you the amount of THC, right? Um, and you want it to be less than that 0.3%. Because I've also had patients come to me saying that, um, that they got high off of the CBD oil, oh. okay? And, and that's because um, the, the product had more THC than it should have had. Well, and that's a good question for people who get drug tested at work or for whatever right. reason. Mm -hmm. If it's at that, you said less than 0.3? So here's the thing, you're, yeah. you're reducing the likelihood of the, so typically when, when people are drug tested, what's tested for is a breakdown product of THC, okay? So that's typically what's tested for. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's a higher likelihood of detection with marijuana products because they have more than that 0.3%. There's a lower likelihood of detection with hemp-based products because there's less than that 0.3%. However, note that there is still a likelihood of detection. Now, there are products on the market that have 0% THC in them. However, I... I would approach these products with caution, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the way that they're made to have 0% THC mm -hmm. is not that the plant originally had 0% THC. It's that the way that the CBD was extracted from the plant. Mm -hmm. Most typically this is, you know, people will um, claim that this is a proprietary process, but I actually went through some patents that were uh, available as public information on Google. And what happens is that they use a series of chemical processes and these chemical processes involve a lot of chemicals, right? Chemicals such as mainly hydrocarbons, but specifically we're talking about things like pentane and hexane. Now, the risk here is that if there are toxic levels of these hydrocarbons left behind, 
those can do a lot of harm to the body, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're, if, you're, if you're consuming a lot of this CBD oil and frequently you're ingesting a lot of these, these solvents. So in the case of products that have 0% THC, what you want to make sure of is that there are not toxic levels of residual solvents left behind. And again, that's information that you can find on the laboratory test results. Because don't they use those hydrocarbons to extract the CBD in the first place? So you're right. just saying more. If there's no THC, 0%, then they yes. use more. Okay. Yeah, so, they use more and, and it goes through more cycles of the chemical processes as it. well. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, so then the other thing is that the laboratory test results are important for, so we talked about residual solvents, but also um, pesticides, right? Unregulated industry, anybody can use anything. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make sure that if pesticides are used, that the levels are non-toxic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, same with um, uh, heavy metals. Okay, so, so the cannabis family of plants are bioaccumulators. They will soak up heavy metals mm -hmm. in their environments. And so, um, you know, undercover investigation of CBD products have shown um, uh, 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 high amounts of lead, for instance. Okay, so this is something important to 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 look at on the laboratory test results. Um, and then, and then uh, the other thing is, is that if you're someone who has a compromised immune system, then you also want to make sure that has been tested for fun common fungus and bacteria that can occur right. on on the plants. Right. So these include things like E. coli, Salmonella, um, uh, and and especially things like Pseudomonas and a fungus known as aspergillus in people who do have compromised immune systems. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. I think these products are becoming more and more mainstream. Mm -hmm. And eventually what's going to happen is that there is going to be more regulation that, that comes uh, the industry's way. And it, it will eventually get to the point where the consumer doesn't have to worry about these things because there's, been, there's a system of checks and balances that have been implemented. But till then, as a consumer, you know, unfortunately, the burden falls on you in terms of making sure that you're getting a high quality CBD product. And so basically now, is it correct that they fall, they don't fall under the FDA, they're not considered drugs, they're considered nutritional supplements. So do they fall so, in the same category? No. So what happened was that okay. the Farm Bill 2018 mm -hmm. basically um, left uh, cannabis and cannabis derived products under the jurisdiction of the FDA. Okay. And the FDA does, um, you know, if you look at their website in terms of uh, under frequently asked questions, they say that CBD products cannot be sold as dietary supplements. Okay. Okay. So what are they classed as? Um, there's really no <laughs> one classification but they don't want uh, CBD products to be sold as dietary supplements. Are they sold as dietary supplements? Will you see the words dietary supplement on products? Yeah. Um, and so I think at this point, the FDA has a big job on their hands. And actually they're, in fact, in May, they're gonna have a public hearing on CBD products, right? Because as of mid-March, there are topical formulations of CBD that are now available at CVS and at Walgreens. Okay, so, so eventually what's gonna happen, I feel like is that there's just gonna be um, a, a regulation that comes in from the end, mainly of the FDA. Well, it's interesting because they are plant derived. And so it's almost, if it, they may have the plant, um, the cannabis, the marijuana plant as a schedule, but if, if they're hemp derived and they take hemp off the schedule because technically it doesn't have enough THC, then they should become just like any other dietary supplement. Well, don't you think? What are, what are your you, thoughts? That, that's logical. That's yeah, completely that's logical. Totally logical, but that doesn't mean that our laws are logical, right? <laughs> <laughs> that would be logical to me. And then it's just any, because otherwise they need to, it, it needs, it's just, it's incongruous right now. It doesn't. Yeah. No, yeah, I completely agree with you. The law is highly confusing. Um, and, and I've been in it long term, uh, long enough where I've been following the changes, right? So yeah. every time there's a change, I become familiar with the new change. But if you're just now entering into the industry, I, I can imagine you can get, you know, overwhelmed by, by the, the legal aspect of it. And then also like the medical aspect of it as well. Um, 
-hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Gonna so say? I was just gonna say, so for patients or people, women who are looking for, how can this help me? And so it can help with pain and inflammation conditions if you're listening and some others that Dr. Patel's talked about. They, I know that you've got lots of YouTube videos that are very wonderful and detailed. So definitely I want people to check that out as a resource of where you can go to learn more. Uh, I know that you have a product as well that you vouch for as being fairly pure and potent. Is that correct? Yes, it was eight months in the making and I drove my farmer crazy in terms of the testing. I said, we're not bottling it up until, um, uh, until I'm satisfied with laboratory test results. So we went through several different um, uh, uh, phases of laboratory testing until it was like, all right, this definitely meets my standards. Um, uh, uh, so that, and then, um, uh, yeah, so I, what I would tell your audience is that if they're looking for more information, I would say start with my book, the CBD yeah. oil solution, which is available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. That will give you a, a very good basic foundation, okay, to go off of. Then uh, for more detailed information, especially when it comes to specific medical conditions, then go to my YouTube channel. And then from there, I imagine your audience will have questions. So I have a right. Facebook group that they can join and I go in about once, every, once a week to, to once every two weeks and answer questions live uh, for, for questions that people may have. Mm -hmm. so, so those are all the different resources Wonderful. Um, that people have available to them. Yes, and we will have links to the book, to your website, to your YouTube channel, so that people can look you up there. Um, I'd love it if you could leave everyone with top three take action tips today that they could use. What would you recommend? They're suffering, they've heard you speak, and I think you already gave them, really. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, just if, you, if you're looking to purchase CBD oil, make sure yeah. it's lab tested, make sure it actually has CBD in it. And then um, uh, make sure you're using it appropriately, right? Because there is such a thing as too much and too little when it comes to mm -hmm. CBD oil. You, you want to hit that sweet spot so that it's actually effective for you. So, so that's, that's what I would say. Okay, great. And then the name of the podcast is Her Brilliant Health Radio. Yeah. I'd love it if you could share with everybody what Her Brilliant Health means to you. Um, Her Brilliant Health to me is happiness. I think that's, that's the root of it all and everything sort of grows from there. I love that. Happiness and health with um, CBD oil. So thank you so much, Dr. Patel, for sharing your expertise and your passion with us. I think medicine needs more and more people like you who have come alive and really uh, paid attention to what they're doing and found greater answers for the questions of our day. And you've done that. Bravo. And thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for letting me speak to your audience. I appreciate that. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Her Brilliant Health Radio. Hopefully you are inspired to take action on some new information you received today. A step towards the bountiful, blissful, beautiful vitality that you deserve. If you have health topics and questions you'd like addressed, please message me on my Facebook page or visit KieranDunstonMD.com and let me know. I'd love to help. Remember to share this podcast on social media and send it to your friends and family who could benefit from it too. If you love the show, please go right now to iTunes, write a review, and make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll be the first to know when future episodes are available. Thank you again for joining me. And remember, achieving optimal health isn't magic, it's science. <laughs>